Hamza Boris Chemaev is a prospect turned contender who blazed through the welterweight rankings as soon as he got into the UFC. Chemaev's first 10 fights were relatively short affairs and mostly showcased his grappling, which makes sense as Hamza was a decorated Swedish freestyle wrestler prior to crossing over into MMA. Hamzat's modus operandi is to primarily operate out of the body lock. Boris doesn't normally obtain the body lock position through a clinch, rather opting to shoot a double or single leg takedown and then working up the body. Chemayev largely initiates grappling through closing distance with strikes such as punches and kicks. Now, for me at least, initiating a takedown attempt through a kick is quite confusing, but I have three possible scenarios for why he does it. He throws a kick in hopes of baiting a check, in which the opponent raises his leg and Chemayev uses that moment to snatch up the leg without having to wrestle it off the ground. Number two, in throwing the kick, if it gets caught, he can use that position to shoot a wizard and bring the opponent to the ground, possibly getting their back. Or three, he does it just because that's what he does, there is no other reason, and I'm looking way too deep into it. When Hamzat finally gets to the body lock, he finishes the takedown with a throw, or a more gas tank friendly trip. Hamzat's top control may seem like a brute force to the untrained eye, but once he gets settled into the top position, he simultaneously employs a number of wrist and leg rides to keep his opponent glued to the ground. Unlike other wrestle heavy fighters though, Hamzat constantly works to finish the fight through either ground and pound or submissions, rarely sacrificing positions to do so. He does that by latching up one or both legs through a series of hooks, reverse hooks, or leg mounts. He secures a wrist either trapping it or just holding on to it to make sure that the opponent isn't able to use the extra space Hamza creates to ground and pound to their advantage to either re-guard, roll for a submission, or reverse. And if they do manage to try either of those to improve position, Boris' ability to scramble, flow on top, and ride their hips is any jiu-jitsu player's nightmare. In this sequence, Hamzat has a tight waist and is succeeding in securing Lee's ankle for an ankle ride. After not being able to control and damage Lee as much as he wanted to, Hamzat transitions to this temporary wrist ride before being able to get a hook in on the inside leg and grabbing a two-on-one. One facet of Chemayev's overall game is his love of pressure and getting his opponents to the cage in the grappling department and the striking domain of the fight. In the grappling, he lifts his opponents and carries them to his corner side of the cage or scoots the opponent to the cage after he has already landed a takedown on them and landed in guard. In the striking, Hamzat backs his opponents up to the cage through lengthy blitzing combinations. Chemayev's distance striking is very fundamental, with the added wrinkle of having good straight punches from both the southpaw and orthodox stances and holding a good amount of power in both hands. Even, even if I want to walk out of that cage and somehow, let's say, I you know, lose a controversial decision or something, I promise you one thing, Fazmat is not going to be physically able to fight come October. As soon as he steps out of that cage, he's going to need at least six months to recover from what I'm going to do. While at distance, Chemaya rarely throws more than a single strike, opting to reserve the lengthy combination while his opponent is within the warning tracks of the octagon with his back to the cage. Because most of Borz's fights have been one-way traffic, the only fight that forced Chemaya to showcase his striking skill set was the Gilbert Burns fight. In this fight, Hamzat debuted another technique that he used to maintain distance and pressure his opponent to the cage via the front kick to the body. Ironically, Hamzat's biggest moments on the feet came while he was in southpaw, which is ironic because he also showed a hole in his ability to judge distance while in the southpaw stance, getting caught easier and harder with his right foot in the lead 
than when he was fighting out of the orthodox stance, where he was able to see Gilbert's strike coming easier and getting out of distance or slipping the punches more often than not. Other than that time where he got caught in the middle of an exchange. For example, here Hamza is literally standing on top of Gilbert's lead foot and winds up punching at air as Gilbert, who isn't even known for his footwork or cagecraft, is able to play Matador and angle off. It remains to be seen if Hamza has an issue with fighting at Southpaw or has issues with open stance engagements in general. His fight against Nate Diaz at Southpaw will shed light on this question if Hamza chooses to engage in both stances against him. If you enjoyed this content, please check out my YouTube channel for more videos and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future.